GPIO expansion for the Arduino and the Raspberry Pi. All the parts, all the code. Come on in. Welcome to Maker's Digest. This week we're going to take a look at the MCP23017 GPIO expander, which does not roll off the tongue, but is a handy part to keep in your arsenal. You never know when you're going to need a few extra GPIO pins, or 16. This little IC connects via I2C and provides an extra 16 GPIO pins to your microcontroller. These can even be stacked on I2C bus for up to 128 I.O. pins. They also have internal pull-up resistors on each pin. We focus on implementation here, so we're going to get right to it. This tutorial will show you how to connect this IC to an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. I don't cover everything that you can do with it. We cover just enough to get it working so you can experiment or get it into your project fast. Let's jump over to the workbench and get started. All right, here we go with the Arduino. We're going to connect the MCP23017 to the Arduino, the chip that does not roll off the tongue for me for whatever reason. Anyways, what we're gonna need is the, the IC itself, An LED to test with. Uh, this is just a regular 5 millimeter LED. A 220 ohm resistor that will connect the LED to power. And a 10K ohm resistor. That is for the reset pin on the chip. We also need 11 male to male jumper wires. And of course, Arduino and a breadboard. Uh, I've made a couple of changes to my breadboard if you're familiar with the channel. Um, this, these power rails are not connected between the center row here, or column. So I jumpered those across and I added a couple of LEDs on the ends just so I could see that I have power all the way across because I, you know, run into a couple of problems where I was connecting something, plugging it in, and just forget about this bridge and start using ground on this side when I had the ground plugged in over here and it wasn't working. It just drove me nuts. We're gonna, we've resolved that by putting these jumpers in and visual status that there is in fact power on the entire rail. So now my new thing is I'm gonna plug power in all the way over here every time and that way I can see that there's power all the way to this LED when that LED is lit. Let's get to this. Uh, there are multiple power and ground on this chip so we're going to use these power rails. So you take the chip, plop it in wherever you want and let's start with power on the Arduino. Jump that over to the power rails. We've got our ground. And take that to ground. Take five volts off of the Arduino to five volts. Let's see, we got power all the way down there. Good. Now we're going to jump from this rail to this rail. We'll take I don't know, let's take a white for ground. Over here. And let's see. It's purple for positive. And we've got power. Get those out of the way. This is great. I love having a visual confirmation that there is power indeed along those rails. Uh, now power to the IC itself. First thing I want to point out is the way that the pin is numbered. Where's my pointer? That'll work. This is pin 1. This is pin 14. This is pin 15. This is pin 28. So we can count off these corners when we're looking for a specific pin rather than having to count all the way down and all the way up. 
we're looking for pin nine for power. So we'll go 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, nine. I like to put a little loop when I have a short jump just to keep it clean. And ground on the MCP 23017 is pin 10, which is right next door. Now we've got power to the chip. We need to also set up, uh, pull the reset pin high. That's what this 10K resistor is for. And that is on pin 18 on the MCP 23017. And we're gonna jump that over to power through this 10K resistor. So pin 18 is 15, 16, 17, 18. Now we can set up the addresses and we use uh, pin 15, 16, and 17, which are designated A0, A1, and A2. We're gonna pull those all low to ground and that's gonna give us uh, a specific address on the chip. Fifteen. Let's go way out here. Pin sixteen. and pin 17. We have our power reset and our address selection. Now we can connect the serial line because this is I2C. It's another type of serial. Last uh, episode we did SPI, which is a different serial connection. Let's see. Uh, on the Arduino, we have pin, pin four is going to go to pin 13 on the chip here on the IC. So pin four, which is Arduino I2C data, that's gonna to go to pin 13, and we're counting 14, 13, counting backwards. And then pin analog 5 on the Arduino is I2C clock, which is pin 12 on the IC, which is, again, right next door. So theoretically, everything is connected. Uh, all of the GPIO ports should be active. We're going to plug in our LED so we can test that. We're going to go off pin 7 here. This is GPIO pin seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. And this is eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So we'll go off of pin seven just because it's at the end. And we'll connect our LED. And if you don't know, you can see one of the legs on this LED is a little bit longer than the other one. That points to power side and this will go to ground. All right, there's the physical connection. Now let's take a look at the software. All right, as usual, wrote this code on my time, not yours. Uh, we do need to include the Adafruit MCP 23017 library, and we're gonna use Adafruit because Adafruit's rad. Uh, to install this, if you don't have it installed, in your Arduino IDE, click on Sketch, Include library, manage libraries. This window will come up and you can search for 23017 
and it's the first hit here. You see I already have it installed. Uh, that's why my install button is grayed out, but if you don't have it installed, your install button will be over here on the right side. Uh, click install, it'll finish, close, it'll be ready to go. So the next thing that happens here is we instantiate our MCP object on the uh, Adafruit MCP 23017 library. We have a delay of a quarter second, which is 250 milliseconds. In the setup portion of the sketch, we do our normal serial stuff so we can see what's going on. Then we start the MCP object by uh, issuing mcp.begin. Now in this example, uh, I, I'm lighting up all 16 GPIO ports as outputs and then flashing them in a series. So what, what, what happens is there's a for loop, it goes from 0 to 15, and I set pin mode I, which is the increment variable here, and set it to output. If you want to just set 1 or 2 or 5 or 3 or 6 or 8, then you just you know eliminate the loop, put your mcp.pin mode and then your pin number here. If you want to set it to an input, you just say input. Onto the loop, we have the main loop portion of the sketch. We have another loop inside, which is going to count from 0 to 15. It's going to tell us which GPIO number it is currently going to flash. And to write that port to high, we use the same digital write. That it's mcp.digitalwrite, the pin number, and then high or low. So in this case, we're going high. We're going to set our delay of quarter of a second. We're going to digital write low off and have a delay of quarter of a second. Let's run this and see if it works. And what will happen is it's going to count from zero to seven. So as soon as this work, as soon as it the sketch loads, this will not flash immediately. It's going to take a second to get to it, but we'll be able to watch the output here. Here we go. There it is, right on. So you can move this around to, we'll move that over to pin six. There it is. And that'll work on any of the 16 GPIO pins here. So now we have uh, all of the digital IO pins on this side of the Arduino plus another 16. So if you have a bunch of LEDs to light up or something like that, this is the way to go. And you can stack these if you read more about I2C and how that works. By changing the address, adding another uh, one of these chips on the serial in series here, you can uh, add more of these and have even more GPIO pins. So that's pretty awesome. Let's now take a look at the Raspberry Pi. And here we are with the Raspberry Pi who yearns for more GPIO. Well, little guy, Jimmy, as you can see, his name is Jimmy. We are going to give you more GPIO pins. We're going to do that with the MCP23017. What we need for this is the IC itself. We're going to need a 220 ohm resistor for the LED that we're going to test with. We need 10K resistor for the reset pin to pull that high on the IC. We need, how many is this? Four male to female jumper cables, wires. And I believe this is seven male to male jumper wires. We're gonna use the rails because there are multiple grounds and power that we need to supply to the IC to make it work. Let's get started. First thing, cram this in here somewhere, wherever you feel like it. Talk about the numbering just a little bit on here. We have pin 1, pin 14, 
pin 15 and pin 28. So when we are connecting our jumper wires to this guy, we can just count off the corners. So we can go one, two, three, or 14, 13, 12. And it's a little bit faster to get to it. Let's set up the power to our rails first. I'm gonna take 3.3 volts, which is pin one on the Raspberry Pi. Go all the way over here. And ground, which is pin six on the Raspberry Pi. And you count that off by going one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right, we got power. Now we're gonna jump the power from this rail to this rail. We'll do that with same colors here. We got white and a negative, white and a negative. Orange into positive, orange into positive. And here we go, we've got power on both rails. Great. Now let's connect all the power to the MCP. When I'm doing a short little jump, I like to put just a quick little loop to keep it clean. And power to this, this guy is uh, pin 10. No, pin nine. Now what am I what am I looking at? Yeah, it's pin nine. So we're gonna go 14, 13, 12, 11, 10, 9. Into positive. And ground on the IC is right next door in pin ten. That's easy to count. Easy to locate. We'll go to ground on this side. And we need to pull the reset pin high. And the way we do that is we're gonna use this 10K ohm resistor. And it's pin 18 is reset. So we'll go 15, 16, 17, 18 is going to pull high to the positive rail. On to setting the address. Uh, pin 15, 16, and 17 are A0, A1, and A2 respectively. And by pulling those to ground or not, you can set the address on this. And for this demo, we're gonna pull them all to ground to set that address because that's the default address for the Adafruit libraries. Seventeen. Got sixteen to ground. that we have power and address, we can connect the actual serial connection. This is I2C, it's a, uh, another type of serial connection. Last week we used SPI. And for this we have three pin three on the Raspberry Pi is SDA. That is uh, serial data, I2C data. So we're gonna go one, two, three and pin three connects to pin 13 on the IC and the next one is uh, serial clock I2C clock pin five on the Raspberry Pi so one two three four five and yeah Raspberry Pi put the I2C pins right next to each other, so that's nice. 
and that goes to pin 12. Now we have all of our power, address selection, and the serial connection. Let's connect the LED so we have something to test with. And we're going to run off of pin 7. And the way that the GPIO is numbered is it goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, or 15. <clears throat> on the LED, if you don't already know, one of the legs is longer on the LED, and that points to positive. We'll go over here to the column that we have the uh, resistor in, and then over to ground. All right. Physical connection is done. Let's take a look at the code. Before we get into the code, we need to enable I2C on the Raspberry Pi, which is loading a kernel module at boot. And it's pretty easy to do. There's instructions in the GitHub page for this episode. We'll run through it here real quick. sudo raspi-config. I want to go down to number five, interfacing options. P5, I2C, enable, disable, automatic loading of the I2C kernel module. Would you like the ARM I2C interface to be enabled? Yes, we would. It is now enabled. Just hit tab, tab, go over to finish, and we're done. Now let's dig into the code and see what that looks like. As usual, my time not yours, wrote this code. Uh, let's go down through here. I don't, I don't need the sys module. I copied that over from a different, uh, different program. All right. We import time from sleep, because we use that for delays. And then this is the Adafruit GPIO module, which includes a family of MCP230XX modules in that module. Uh, if you want, if you're going to need to install this, uh, check out the GitHub page for this episode, and I've got a link in there to the Adafruit GitHub page that has detailed instructions on how to install it. It's not hard. You can do it with apt, or you can run a pip module or pip install, or you can even just clone the repo and do a manual install. But the Adafruit GPIO GitHub page has way better instructions than I could write, so I'm just referring you over there. And we say as this name here, and I'll tell you why in a little bit, but we want to name it something that we're familiar with. Next part is we instantiate the MCP object here. And we call that by MCP230XX, which is our name for this module. And then the MCP23017. Uh, there's also a 008 version of this IC. And uh, it's included in this module as well. This is the same as the Arduino. We are going to light up all 16 GPIO pins on here. And the way I'm going to do that to keep cleaner code is just run a loop and do a setup with X. It's going to count from zero. And this is where we have to remember what that is called because the way that you set out or in on that GPIO is to call this name MCP230 capital X capital X dot GPIO dot out. And that's setting all the pins on this to output. If you want to set to input, you can use this here. And if you don't if you only have one or two or five or six pins that you want to enable or set out or output or input on, you can get rid of this loop and just drop that in right there where this number refers to the pin. In the main program, we're going to run the same loop. It'll tell us which 
LED or which pin we're going to flash and to set output on this we say mcp.output x which is 0 through 15 and then 1 which is high or on. We're going to wait for a quarter of a second we're going to set the output on that pin to low wait for a quarter of a second and uh, jump back through the loop until we get to the end and then dump out. You can also, this we're just doing outputs here, but you can also read a digital input. And the way that you do that is instead of MCP output, you say MCP input and then give it the uh, pin number that you're trying to read and you set that to a variable. Let's exit out of this, run it, and see what happens. Pseudo Python MCP. All right, let's see. There it is. Do it one more time. And there we go. So we can move this over to another pin. We'll move it to pin six. Run that again. Let's see if that works. Awesome. There it is. That is working on the Raspberry Pi. Killer. Well, there you have it. The MCP23017 GPIO expander on an Arduino and a Raspberry Pi. And don't forget, all of the code we used in this episode is on GitHub and linked in the description below. There's also a link to where you can buy the parts for this tutorial if you want to try it yourself. Now that you have everything that you need, go be creative and share with me what you make. I can be found on Facebook and Instagram, Twitter, Patreon, and all of those. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and ringing that little bell at the bottom so you can be notified when a new episode is available. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep making.